Welcome back. Today we're going to tie a trico spinner. Uh, this spinner is from this book from way back. I did this book, uh, man, 20 some years ago. But we're going to do this little spinner here. I know you can't see it, but uh, this book has got a lot of really, this is my Cripples and Spinners book. It's got a really cool, a lot of really cool patterns in it that aren't mine. They're, I had seven other people in there tying uh, really neat patterns, but this is called the Compare Spinner. This fly, as you can see, is it's very simple. This is a three-step fly. And it's basically the beauty of this fly. I put this screen up so you can see easy here. Uh, starts here. And the beauty of this fly is it's not only a spinner, it's a dun and a spinner. It's a compare dun with a spinner silhouette wing. The bottom, from the bottom, you get a, a spinner silhouette. And so it's super efficient. You can fish, and by the way, you can fish this fly through any hatch. I don't care if there, there's no spinner wings out. I don't care. They'll still eat it. But it's it's super simple. It's a you can see there the tail is also the wing and the and the original form. I did not do that. I, I split the tails and I started doing this style and I, I truly think it floats better and I've never seen a difference between in the trichos in particular whether it mattered. But again it's this top where you can see that's the biggest thing. You're talking about a 20, 22, 24, right? This thing is this is invisible when there's a bunch of bugs on the water. So you get this comparison uh, done style front and then you turn it over and then you get that incredible uh, silhouette of the of the swing of the wing and that is what makes trichos how, what the fish in my mind is what the fish sees. It's generally when you look at the silhouette on that of a trico and I'll show you a picture here um, I, I don't think you can see it very well. I'll put it over this one. But this fly right here, you can see the silhouette of the wing, or this one's maybe even better, right here. You can see this is a trico. It's hind ends, right? Can you see that, Jeremy? There you go. Yeah, okay. So right in here, you can see, look at the silhouette of that wing. It's frequently 80 plus percent of the overall value that the, the fish is seen looking up that's going to see this massive wing laying on the uh, silhouette of the wing laying on the water. And the, and the abdomen is this little tiny thing. So let's get to tying this thing. Um, this is, I'll go through this stuff real quickly. Uh, the hooks, I'm going to use, I've, and I've always used these hooks. I've used the, the TMC 101s. You can use a 100, either one you want. Just one's a ring eye and one's a flat eye. But it's the, that's the one that I'm using. And I have always used these, these hooks uh, for this particular fly. My thread's uh, Nano Silk 18 knot green. That's the body uh, on this stuff. It's going to be the green Nano. I'm totally addicted to this stuff. I, uh, it's just, it's just I, I can hardly tie without it anymore. I'm getting so addicted because it's so strong and it's so skinny. The wing, tail, and the spinner wing, both wings, are going to be EP trigger point. Um, this is going to be... I, you know, in the old days, I used the high vis. That's why it was called the high vis compare spinner. But it's they don't make that anymore. This particular one is the uh, pale morning dun. If you want to use the bright white, that's fine too. I, you know, I sometimes it's I I, I err on that kind of a dull side just a little bit. I don't know why. Uh, and so I this one you can see these are the two colors are pretty much identical. But this one's just a lot brighter. And so. And it's whatever you like. And then the dubbing for the abdomen is going to be super fine black. And that's all there is. It's nothing to it. So grab a hook. And this is a size 20. So it's going to be a little bit of a little bit of a challenge to see in the from the camera's perspective. We're going to definitely need a different size glass for that for the old man. So we're going to when I start this. And again, the proportions of this is really the problem. And, and you, when people get looking at little hooks, they really start losing their, their balance as far as, well, you know, how do things go? But this, one's, this one is super simple because we're working quarters. So we're going to start this thread right at the eye, advance your thread back to the halfway point, get rid of that, and then come back to the quarter, so half of what you just did, come back right here. Now, I started out with a hank of this EP trigger, right? And I've cut it in advance, and you and I, this is important because you don't want to work with little pieces. Cut it off, get, 
and there's no real way, I'm going to show you what it is. There's no real way, stuff's really strong, so you can fight, you know, pull it out of there easy. There's no real way to tell you what I'm looking for. And so I, I pulled these two out, and you can see I've got, one's the wing, this one on my right's the wing, and then this is the spinner style, and it's essentially half as big. But, you know, you, you'll learn to work with whatever you work with. But I encourage you to work with these long pieces. I tied a couple with this one earlier. And so this one is, I haven't tied as many with. And so it's gonna, it'll, it'll be a lot easier to do this, especially if you're gonna sit down, you should do, you can do these really fast. Sit down and tie a half dozen minimum. And that way you can just use up and you won't have all this wasted material. So we're going to start, right? We're at the quarter way right here. And take your wing, leave it just a little bit longer than you need. I mean, not, you know, make like a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch longer than you think you're going to need. If you want to try to do it exact, you get the overall body length and then set it. But I'm going to leave a little bit extra. You'll see how I do that in a second, the reason I do that. So I'm going to leave a little bit extra working out here. And we're just going to get it right. Make sure that you're right where you belong. You know, look at it. And then before you, before you tighten your thread or do anything, Make sure the wing is down, and you see how I'm flattening that out, because this is going to be the compare spinner wing. This is going to be the one that does the sunbeam. And so then, once you know it's down, just give it three or four turns back. And this is, by the way, one of the times I use a fine point scissor. And I'm going to come underneath here, and I'm going to cut essentially a third of that away. And when I get to that point where I step off that little bridge, that little step, I come in here, and we're going to end up, and we're just cutting this in, in just little tiny pieces, right? And if you don't want to mess with this, leave a little bit, leave a little bit more than you need. You can cut them now if you want. You can always cut these later. And by the way, it doesn't matter. They, they've got two tails. You, you can end with five. I see no difference on this fly when I do that. So I'm going to leave just a, I'm going to cut uh, a couple more out of there. Give me, give me you. And then we're going to just pull that back. And then we're going to trim it, leave it a little long. And then before you go throw this side, just come back here and kind of align this stuff again. And again, we're going to leave a little extra. So that way it won't all start changing distances. And as you work through, this will always, you can come in and cut that little bitty part and you're right back to where you started, set it aside. It's, it's, you're done. So now we're going to just work back through here to the tail. And I'm using this green thread. You know, generally you've got a light and a dark, a male and a female. If you want to do this with white, and, you know, and then do the black, that's fine too. There's a lot of olive in these, and I'm just using this darker green thread. And all I'm doing is making this body smooth, getting back here. Now I'm going to get right behind. And again, make sure right now, make sure that this wing is folded all the way out. You can see from there that's it's just this big fan, right? And that, that's going to give me the, the silhouette that's going to sit on the water. So I don't want half of it be sideways. Now we're going to take the second wing, which would be the spinner style, back here. And I like it a little bit sideways for the camera here. So I'm just going to do a figure eight over top of this. I was yelling at Jeremy, I don't like tying sideways. He will not succumb to letting me move to the right. Makes you feel mortal. Yes. More than so. All right, so you can see here, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave, I just got one single figure eight on here. Before you tighten it down, just make sure you're, I want enough, I'm gonna wrap between these two wings with my dubby, okay? And so, and it's, we're, we're almost done with this fly. And so we're, make sure, just leave it, and you see your gap, that it's where you like it. Look at your abdomen, and remember, on almost every mayfly, it's the same ratio. It's about 30-40% 30, 30, thicker thorax than abdomen. When you look at a trico, it is such a wedge. It is the ultimate V-man taper. This thing goes thunk, just like that. It's got a tiny little abdomen. So don't worry about having a little bit of buildup here. Set it so that just make sure that the wing's nice and tight. Move forward and you leave a little of this because when we go through to wrap the dubbing, it doesn't get hung up in all these fibers. All right, so now we're just going to move forward, come right up to the eye, just behind the eye, 
and we've got everything set you can cut this one off a little just leave yourself and again set this one down it's it's ready to go for your second fly now we're going to take a little bit of black super fine dubbing and we're going to and I like this to be really fine I'd rather I don't like to build I, I see people that can do that very easily they can use a lot of dubbing and just poof and then and it looks good Ma'am, I don't do that. If I, if I start with a gob of dubbing, it looks like I started with a gob all the way through it. So I just kind of get a nice, tight, real thin, because we're going to go all the way back and all the way back forward to finish this thing. And just, you know, maybe an inch, inch and a half here. So first we're going to stand this wing up. We're just going to give, see how thin that dubbing is? We're going to stand that up. We're going to go right through it. And again, just take your time, look right over it, and I want a couple here. And then start, just try to move your fibers so you don't, don't capture too many of the, the white ones in there. And so I was just looking over top of it, and then come back, look at it, and then flip this thing upside down and make sure you've got a nice, you can see this, the distinction between the abdomen and the thorax is growing. And so just get real tight and make sure you have at least one real tight one behind this wing right there. That, that is really critical. If you don't have a good base behind this wing, it'll tend to want to fold over. We don't want that to happen. We want it to stay. So other, it just looks like a mat back there if you do that. So now I'm just forward. I've got a little bit more dubbing. Very little bit more. So between them, and now we need to stand, now I need to stand this wing up with the W beam, because I can't have it forward, I've got to lean back and make that sunbeam. So I pull it back nice and tight, and wrap right behind, right in front of that thing, and make sure when you're done, if there's not enough here right now, if you don't have enough dubbing that that wing wants to lean forward, just put a little bit more on and set it back. So we're good. We're done. So, look, try not to do what I just did and catch your fibers in there. So now I'll take this to the side and fray it all out. Make sure it's all standing up. And you can see this is not a lot of wing on top. It's not a lot there. You can't believe how much light this thing grabs. When you see that fly out there, you can pick it out between the other, the naturals and yours. So once you get it all like this, it's all crazy. Just pick it up and just take it, put it, take the wing, put it in your left hand, get him going. And then just kind of, just kind of try to judge it. So the overall, you're going to cut it so the wing's about the length of the body, right? So I'm going to cut that all off. And remember, this is a tiny little fly. I missed one there. So now I've got the wing, so it's all splayed out. And you can come in and take a look from the bottom, make sure it's all you've got equal sides, and then just give it a little bit of a trim to start that shape. Just trim it from, trim that from the bottom. Just take a, I, for some reason when I do mine, I always, no matter how I come up and cut that, cut it, I always seem to have one a little bit longer than the other, and I don't see it until I flip it over. When I flip this fly over, now I can see that that wing's just a little bit shorter, it probably doesn't mean anything. It means a lot to me because you'll look in your box and the one that's not the way, it, when you flip it over to tie it on, if it's not right, it'll go back in your box, you'll never fish it. So once this gets, you know, you start casting this and it'll, it'll all start to blend together, what you're gonna see from the bottom is you're gonna have this incredible wing silhouette and you can trim this to any shape you want. Just, just keep, I'm gonna be done with it just for the sake of moving forward here but what you're going to see it's a super easy fly to tie this is truly the only trico i have fished in probably 25 years i tie, tie a lot of them for people in the shop here uh, we had an incredible trico this year uh, trico hatches on the uh, lake and it was just a killer up there but as you can see if you want to take that tail make it two tails three tails great go ahead i usually leave four or five back there maybe a little more but the important thing is I can see the top gets an incredible silhouette from the bottom. 
you can see that and you can see that you can see the fly because of the spinner wing when it's out in the water. Hope you like it. Hope it helps you out. By the way, we're going to do the wet fly version of this, the sunk spinner, next.